The fire hose is flowing and the news and the releases from Amazon are coming out seemingly every day. We are truly in the end game for the release of the Wheel of Time TV show. Now today's weekly Wheel of Time news, we'll be covering the behind the scenes clips from the show, three new teasers with never before seen content, a Comic Con event in London that released four clips from the first episode of the show, a new audiobook reader, and even more. The news is packed today, so join me as we break down all of the news and notes from the Wheel of Time TV show in the weekly Wheel of Time news. Now we have a ton to get to today, but first, quick thank you to the video sponsor, NordVPN, but we will have more on them in a bit. Let's hit the spoiler warning for the video. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red, but with major spoilers only through The Great Hunt, the second book in the series. If you haven't read all the way through book two, you may be spoiled watching this video. You have been warned. So let's kick things off with an announcement that came this past week that Rosamund Pike has recorded a new version of Eye of the World in audiobook form, and that this version would be presumably released here in the near future. Now, obviously, this is in conjunction with the show, that's why they're doing it, and they're giving a new version of the audiobook for readers to digest with the actress playing Moraine narrating the entire thing. Now, I'm certainly going to pick this up once it's available, because basically, I will buy anything that has Wheel of Time attached to it at this point, and I love audiobooks. That being said, I am very partial to Kate Redding and Michael Kramer's versions of the audiobooks, which... I think are immaculately done, and the voices that they do for the characters will always essentially be my headcanon. That being said, I'm definitely going to pick this up when it's out. We just don't know when that will be yet. What do you guys think of the news? Are you planning on listening to the Rosamund Pike version of Eye of the World, or are you happy with the Michael Kramer and Kate Redding version? Let me know in the comments of the video. Also this past week, we got a full-length feature article in GQ magazine about the Wheel of Time TV show, written by Zach Barron, who is himself a Wheel of Time book fan. Now, we haven't had a great track record record with well-written or well-informed articles about the book series or the TV show as of yet, with most of those articles that we have seen being written by somebody who does not appear to have read the series before. This article, however, was very different and it was excellently written. It was comprehensive in the sense that it covered a lot more than the previous articles. It brought us new pictures, new quotes, and of course, new perspective on the show. Now I'm gonna to try to hit the highlights of the article here. I will have it linked in the description of the video so you can read all of it if you would like. And then I'll talk about some of the photos in the article as well, as there were a couple new ones that we haven't seen before. One of the main highlights of the article, in my opinion, was the attention to detail that they mentioned. One of the main examples given is that they built an entire multi-million dollar set for the Two Rivers, which is what they're calling Emmons Field in the books and then proceeded to mostly burn it all down. They actually burnt part of the village down to create the realism and devastation of the Trolloc attack on Winter Night. Now, what struck me as they described it in this article is that Amazon did not even blink about building an entire set, spending millions of dollars on it, and then burning it down. They knew that they needed to swing for the fences and go after what they wanted to create. And that actually leads into what most of the article is about. Basically, Amazon set out to create the next Game of Thrones. Not in the sense that they are copying the Game of Thrones story or the style of Game of Thrones, but more the cultural and social impact that the show had on pop culture. They knew they couldn't manufacture that, but that they would need a very good story and then to put the right amount of money into it. And that's exactly what brought them to both The Wheel of Time and The Lord of the Rings, and that's why they've invested so much money in those two series. They believe in the stories, and they're essentially going to spare no expense to make these shows a reality, and hope that they reach the same level of cultural and social importance, which is pretty encouraging to me because we know they're all in. To that end, the article talks about how the budget for the show is well over 10 million per episode, which is almost double what Game of Thrones received in its first season. They have traveled to multiple locations in different countries, employed thousands of people, purchased an entire 350,000 square foot building, and built their own studio complex rather than renting something smaller, because the production demanded more than most series. The descriptions of Jordan Studios and the article are really staggering to me. They have inside that complex their own video effects studio, a stunt gym with an archery range and a climbing wall, a full-time armorer, a 3D printer, a costume department that created 350 different costumes for the first two episodes alone, multiple football field-sized sound stages, and four different construction companies that are contracted to build new interiors when they need them for the show. It is certainly not to say that money spent automatically equals a great show, 
but money not spent can certainly equal that. One thing that will not be able to be said about this show is that it's low budget or low in scope. They really did swing for the fences. The article also talks about the people involved in the production, specifically Rafe Judkins and how he connected with his mother after coming out as gay and then through the books, they both found characters they could connect with and in turn, that connected them. This was actually part of Rafe's pitch to Amazon to get the show greenlit. And that connection to the characters was one of Amazon's reasons for going with the Wheel of Time, which certainly gives me hope as that I think that's pretty central to the story's success. Some other notes from the article were that Daniel Henney mentioned that he has a naked hot tub scene, which to me sounds like a bath. So I wonder if we'll be getting some nudity in that department. Uh, to me, this is probably just non-sexual and non-nude on screen, but he will be showing off a bit, which I'm sure they're doing. That implies other characters will as well, though, because there was an intimacy coordinator, so take from that what you will. There was talk in the article about how this could be a life-changing experience for the cast, and that they could forever be known as these characters, and how that dawned on them in their audition process, which I thought was actually pretty cool. People like Kit Harington and Amelia Clark are now household names because of their parts in Game of Thrones, and they had not expected that. Another thing that was very very cool to hear was that the Trolloc costumes ended up being so realistic and so well done that a significant portion of the CGI budget got to be reallocated because they didn't need to touch them up. This is absolutely awesome to hear as practical effects hold up over time and they have a degree of realism that at least right now I don't think could be replicated through CGI. At least to me, I always notice the difference. So there were also a number of pictures included in the article that we have not seen before that I want to run through here real quick. First up, we have this feature picture of the White Cloaks. Now in the front here, we have Jeff from Bornhold, and then off to the right, this here is Eamon Valda. Now what I think caused quite a reaction from people was the costuming. Some people loved it, some people hated it. What I can say is that this is for sure a change from how they described in the books. But I know for all of you who call me a shill already, you're just gonna think I'm shilling some more but I actually like the change and I at least understand why it was made, which is always important to me. In the books, the White Cloaks are described very much in line with Knights Templar, with burnished breastplates and full armor with clean white cloaks. And in this picture, at least, there don't seem to be much in the way of armor. The sunburst is on the shoulder rather than on the breastplate or the cloak. Now, why do I like this, you might ask? Well, for one, this gives off the crazy religious fanatic vibe far more than Knights Templar do to me. Uh, it's also far more practical as White Cloaks are described as wearing their armor all the time, which is not really realistic. This type of costuming communicates what the White Cloaks are without even needing explanation which I think is great in terms of communication. That all being said, I can certainly see why some would not like the change and why some call it unnecessary. What camp do you fall into? Do you like these costumes or no? Uh, let me know in the comments of the video. The next picture here is a Waygate uh, and Moraine on Aldeeb in front of it. Now we've seen this many times now from the marketing and this is just another example of something that they have built from scratch. What I would like to see actually is how it functions and where it actually is. Is this Shinar or not? We then get this shot of Rand and Bella with his father, Tam Althor, across the back of the horse, set in the devastated scene of Two Rivers. Now this essentially confirms that we are going to get the Althor farmhouse scenes, something that we'll talk a little bit more about later in this video. And that Rand, who sought the safety of the Two Rivers, finds it every bit as devastated as their farmhouse. Now, here we get a good shot of some of the red Aes Sedai and Leandrin in particular. I love that the red sister here is wearing a hijab as well. I just think that's awesome. We come back to this picture that we've seen before, so I won't spend too much time on it. It's Loghain in a cage, followed by Aes Sedai, specifically Alana and Kareen Nagashi. Now, this here is Sophie Akinato as Swan Sanche. Now, this costuming is very ornate, and she looks commanding. I know the criticism here is that Swan would not wear something like this, and while I would tend to agree, this appears to be a formal session of the hall. And then in another scene from the trailer, we see her wearing something much less intricate. So that seems a lot more like Swan. So this might just be a one-off. In any case, what did you all think of the GQ article? I think it was one of the best ones that we've seen yet. Let me know in the comments of the video. So as with the other teasers that Amazon has released in the past week, I won't be covering each frame by frame today. I have a video that is almost done that will break down all of them that we've gotten, and that is hopefully coming very, very soon. But I do wanna talk about this a little bit. Amazon released a short form teaser on their Twitter account, highlighting the various costumes of characters in the show. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the costume designist Isis Mussenden created more than 350 costumes for the first two episodes of the show alone, which is actually a staggering number. And there appears to be a huge degree of variation, style, design, material, which I think is really, really cool in these costumes. My favorites from this bunch are Lan's costume. I, I love the styling and the themes that they've chased in creating the Malkiri look. 
I also love the look of Nynaeve and her very stout two rivers wool, and Loghain who has a very distinct look of nobility about him. I think all of their clothing kind of speaks to who they are and where they're from. Now I'll break this down further in another video, but what did you all think of the costume teaser video that they released? Let me know in the comments. And next up here we'll talk about the behind the scenes clip that was released by the show account that gave us not only new clips from the show, but also commentary and some clips of how things were shot, including our first looks at some characters as well. Now again, I'm not doing a frame by frame breakdown here, but I love the clip. We got a couple awesome moments and it's really, really cool to see the scale of the production. From the soldiers from Shinar charging to the intricacy of the columns and the look of the interior of the White Tower to the explosions caused by channeling. The show looks epic in scale, which is what we all wanted. Now, we also got our first look at Tom and he is for sure a zaddy. No long mustaches, but he does have a very cool and very rugged look to him. I can't wait to hear Alexander Willem play the guitar, because supposedly he is amazing at it, and he looks like he is holding it right there. Now, the hair flip from Nynaeve was also something that stood out to me in the clip. I know everybody else thought that looked badass, but like, it looked badass. We also got a clip of Tam Althor standing in front of a door as a Trolloc bursts in. Again, further giving proof that we will see the Trolloc attack on the Althor farm on winter night, not just the village. I really, really love the behind the scenes stuff like this, and I love the context of how they make the show. We know from Rafe that they have a team working on producing behind the scenes stuff, like they have a video crew just for that, for behind the scenes clips and whatnot. I can't wait to see that. I'm almost as excited to see that as I am the show. Almost. But let me know what you think of the behind the scenes clip in the comments of the video. And here is yet another short clip that Amazon released that gives a short explanation of the Aes Sedai and what they are for non-book readers. This was the first entry in what appears to be a series of Wheel of Time explained videos that they are doing releasing for new readers or new watchers for that matter. Now, while it is a short clip, there was a lot of fun stuff packed into it. We get to see more clips of channeling and some narration from Rosamund about how Aes Sedai are feared, but that their title actually means servants of all. Now, a couple cool things that stood out to me from the clip. The first was the fact that we got a small clue that maybe Kareen did not die when she was flung into the column by Loghain. We have this shot of Moraine, Leandrin, and what appears to be Kareen channeling at somebody off screen. But you can see the broken chair there in the background, so this this looks like Kareen maybe got up. I also loved this shot of Alana making the ground blow up, which is certainly very cool. This video will be a part of my longer breakdown video of all of these clips actually, so if you want more, again, wait for that. But let me know in the comments of the video what you think of this one. Also this past week was the London Comic Con, and it featured a Wheel of Time track that was not digital and it wasn't open to the non-paying public, but at this track they showed four actual scenes from the show to viewers. They showed a Gwaine's Women's Circle initiation scene, so like the stuff of her falling in the river and then coming up through the colors, all of that. The extended scene of Moraine entering the Wine Spring Inn that we had already had released, but it had extended uh, dialogue and other shots in it. Then there was also a scene of the Trolloc attack on the village and the Outdoor farm. And then a scene in the aftermath of the attack on the village with the people blaming Moraine for the attack and her saying they need to leave. Now, obviously I was not in attendance for this one, but fellow Wheel of Time YouTuber, Wheel of Time Theory was able to get into the event and recorded live reactions to the clips as they are playing. Now, I'm gonna have his video linked in the description of this one. It's absolutely something that you should go check out. He has two videos up on the topic, go watch them. But I had a couple takeaways from the audio that we could hear and simply things that he was saying during his reaction. Now, one is that the fight sounds epic and devastating. Given the amount of screaming and watching him react, I think the attack on Emmons Field is gonna be fleshed out very, very well. Now, what is also awesome about this exchange is that we do see the attack on the Althor farm. Tam does fight off Trollocs, or one Trolloc at least, and the way it's described, Tam looks every bit the Blade Master and Rand every bit as shocked as you would think seeing Tam do his thing for the first time. Another thing that was confirmed from the clips according to Wheel of Time Theory is that we are going to see a Drakkar, or at least he heard one. Now even though we have not seen any of them in the marketing materials as of yet, he said there would be one, so I thought that was really cool. Now in general, just watching his face and his reactions had me super excited to see the show, not that I wasn't before, but after seeing this clip, I'm curious how all of you feel about your excitement level for the show. So go watch his clip and then let me know what you think. Now we are gonna move on and talk about the new teaser that was released initially on Amazon Prime and then later to YouTube. There were reports that the video wasn't available for a lot of people in certain countries, which is something that today's sponsor, 
NordVPN could help you with. NordVPN is the number one VPN service in the world. And while a VPN is absolutely necessary to protect your internet privacy, it is also super useful in getting around geo-locked content. For example, you could have used NordVPN to log into the American Amazon Prime and watch the video that you could not see elsewhere. This works for Netflix, Hulu, pretty much any of the streaming services. NordVPN is very cheap as well. For just a few bucks a month, you get to keep your internet service provider from tracking and selling your browsing data, and you get to keep nefarious people online from getting your data. However, because you're one of my viewers, you are also gonna get a big discount on top of the already cheap NordVPN service. Just head to the link in the description and sign up and get a massive discount. You should have a VPN, and if you don't, you really need to get one. Check out the link in the description, and. Now now, let's get back to the video. So as I explained, Amazon released another teaser directly to Amazon Prime, and it just sat on the page without anybody really noticing it for a day or two. Then, all of a sudden, it came to people's attention and we realized that this was one of the most detailed and coolest teasers they have dropped yet. Now again, I am not gonna do a frame-by-frame -frame breakdown in this video, but I will in another breakdown video. I, I am gonna give my thoughts though. In general, to me, this was the best teaser they've released yet. The teaser was narrated by Moraine, and she's essentially telling us the basic plot of the story and about her quest. Now, what I love about this is how it introduces the story of the books. And if you aren't a book reader, this could be something that would tell you what this show is going to be about. The clip certainly plays into the mystery surrounding who might be the Dragon Reborn. The clip even ends with Moraine asking the question. Now, one thing I know that has caused a lot of controversy here is the inclusion of a shot of Egwene while she asks that question. Now, this has caused people to wonder if they are going to make Egwene the Dragon Reborn or what other major changes they're going to make like that. And I will set this somewhat to rest right now. No, they are not making Egwene the Dragon Reborn. These are not the types of changes they are making. Rand is still going to be the Dragon Reborn, but they are going to play the mystery up a little bit more than they did in the books. In the books, it was obvious from very early on that it was Rand. It may become obvious in the show, but it will not be initially obvious. Now, some other thoughts from the teaser. Number one, the visuals are stunning. This is very epic in scale. There are shots that are reminiscent of the Lord of the Rings. It's just beautiful. Number two, they are not shying away from violence, and I truly think the fights are going to be impactful and felt by us as viewers. I think we're likely to see some people die that we've met or that we might care about from the books, so get ready for that. Overall, I am far more encouraged by this teaser than I even was before, which is saying something. I cannot wait to break this down with you in my full breakdown, but what did you guys think of the teaser trailer? Let me know in the comments of the video. Let's quickly move on to some news that I released last week about WattCon, the new Wheel of Time convention that I'm a part of, along with a ton of other fans, organizers, and creators around the Wheel of Time. We are hosting the con here in Columbus, Ohio, next July 8th through the 10th. And last week, we not only announced the con, but we set out to raise about $12,000 to get the con off the ground. I can say this with no embellishment at all. We were absolutely blown away by the response. We hit our $12,000 goal within nine hours of announcing the con, and then blew past our stretch goal of 17,000 within 48 hours. I cannot say what an awesome community this is, and we are already working to get the final details out to you all and start the ticketing process and opening up the hotel block. Look for information coming here within the next two weeks. I can say this, you will absolutely have details here well before the release of the show. Now you can follow WatCon on social media, specifically Twitter at WatCon Official to get updates. We are expecting to sell out of tickets once they open. So make sure to be on top of it if you are wanting to be a part of the first year of the convention. So last week in the excitement of announcing WatCon, I completely forgot to include the contest winner from the previous week. So as a reminder, the contest was to let me know what Aja you would choose by replying to a tweet that I threw up on Twitter. And then you would receive an Aja shirt if you were selected and that one would come from shotwheeltime.com. The winner of that contest is tweeting the pattern, who told me that they would be green Aja. So make sure to direct message me on Twitter so that I can get you out your shirt. This week's contest is gonna be about the books. I want to know who your favorite character from the books is and why. Comment on this video with your answer, and of course, you must be subscribed to the channel and like the video as well. If I pick your answer, you will get any t-shirt you want from shopwheeloftime.com. So to recap, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and then leave a comment on who your favorite character is from the books and why. That's the news this week, everybody. Thanks for watching, and make sure to check out the Patreon if you want to support what I'm doing here. Things are about to get absolutely crazy, and I know some fun stuff coming. I could not do this without your support, so I thank all of you from the bottom of my heart. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Until next time.
Peace out.